Campers, we're going camping. <gasps> it's happening. Feels like September, but it's October. Go deep into the map drawer. Hero 6, GoPro finally upgrading from the 3. Bit of a leap in technology. Oh, there's the kids. What is this little arrow? I gotta figure this camera out. I better get it figured out. We're leaving in about eight hours. You'll never guess where we're going. Algonquin, we. It's me, just me, alone, solo. I'm not sure yet where in the park. It's October. I have only three days, two nights, but we're gonna make the best of it. It's the Carolyn Jane and I and you together in the park again. Enjoy. Pita bites. Okay, so I think we've decided on Booth Lake. Haven't been there in a long time. Not too heavy on the portaging to get in. And I've only got a couple days, so I'm just gonna take it easy, do some photography, and just canoe camp for three lovely days. The weather looks insane. It's supposed to be up like 20 degrees. Who would've thought, third week of October. There's a lot of cool side trips you can do. A lot of little loops close by. So I'll just push in on the first day, go to Booth, and uh, hang out there. Do a day trip on the second day, and head out on the third day. Three days. On the video side, I'm hoping the uh, GoPro here will do the majority of the heavy lifting. I'm not bringing my tripod this time. Even my uh, DSLR, I'm gonna strip it down. 5D with the kit lens, 24 to 105. And the beauty, 16 to 35. Mm. First aid. Ditch kit. And a little Tascam recorder. Get you some nice sounds. It's the new Hero 6. <laughs> Maps and camera gear ready. It's about the beauty, the art. All right, we're gonna pack up the gear here. Sleeping bag and thermarest. Some extra clothing and fleece blanket. For the toes and the hammock, keep a little extra warm. A hammock and some extra bits, rope and a small tarp, all my food for the next three days. Extra water bottle. Wow, packing light. Stove, stove fuel. Sailor Jerry's. Put some TP in here. Boom snap. Look at that, it's all coming together in there. Toiletries bag, odds and ends, bits and pieces, toothpaste, some duct tape. Check out this little bad boy. Oh, little guy. Look at that little thing. It's a little special unit for the hammock. Should come in pretty handy. Rain gear, nice merino wool toque, gloves, and a little fingerless gloves that I like to bring just to allow for better camera work. Hat. So I'm bringing the saw. Look at that old bugger. Oh, she's been through a headless saw, still holding together. Made a new sleeve for it. Pretty proud of myself. <laughs> With some 10 minutes sewing there. Yeah, baby. Let's see what I saw. Big red. You'll just have to stay home this fall. Let's get this rack ready. Woo! Carolyn Jane needs a dusting. Don't hurt yourself. She's 
stuck. Stuck good. Algonquin, here we come. All right, we've landed in uh, Huntsville. Excited, so excited. Campers, yeah, October. Super warm though. And there's still some color in the trees. We're heading to Algonquin. Shocker, pretty excited. Probably got about another 45 minutes or so to get to the turn off. I was originally planning to go end of September, but my uh, father-in-law passed away just a few weeks back, so so here I am in October. But I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm here this time of year. I think it's going to be great. Going back to Booth Lake, a place I've been to a couple times. Uh, it's not too strenuous to get in, just a couple of portages, like a 90 meter and a 600 meter. There's lots of cool uh, day trips you can do from that area. And I'm just seeing my first heron flying over the car. We're in the park. It's beautiful. The crows are saying hello. I just came to the Canoe Lake office. But it's only eight o'clock and I don't think they open until nine, so. Uh, and anyway, I don't need to be here. I'm going to uh, Booth Lake, so I need to go to Access Point 17. I just thought I'd stop in here and get a load of that view because I can never get sick of it. And uh, I thought maybe I could just buy my permit here now, but they're not open, so I'm going to head to Booth Lake, access point 17, drink some coffee, listen to some tunes, and look at the tail end of these beautiful fall colors, which have mostly gone away. So I just came into the uh, permit office here. It's about 20 minutes uh, outside of Madawaska, which is where I need to turn off to head in towards uh, Booth Lake. And uh, I thought, you know what, I'll just stop in here, maybe grab my permits here while I see that it's open because you know, maybe the guy going into that remote permit office out there won't be there. Sure enough, she said, they just closed up the other day. I would have had to go all the way to that takeoff point to find out that I couldn't get a permit there and, uh, and had to drive all the way back. I would have lost an hour or so, gravel road. Glad I came in here and we're almost ready to go. All right, here we are, ready for departure. We're just in the narrows that lead into Farm Lake. There's a 90 meter portage that at the end of that goes into Kitty Lake and then a 650 that leads into Booth. The rock program. Let's see if we can find ourselves some adventure. October. You're kidding me. Crazy stuff. That's what they're calling.
calling for three days of sun, 20 degrees, down to nine or 10 at night. That's early September weather. I'll take it. All right, just taking a little break here. Definitely a bit of a headwind. It's calmed down right now though, but I'm kind of in the lee of this uh, little spit of land. Continuing on our way. Beautiful day. My God, I'm taking the layers off already. Feels like it's 20. Once I get back out under the wind, it should cool me down a little bit. When I was picking up my permit, the woman I was talking to said I was the only one uh, booked on booth tonight. I imagine that'll change. There'll be a few people showing up because it's going to be a nice weather this weekend, but I think we're going to get a little bit of solitude on this trip. All right, let's keep on rocking and see what we can do under this uh, headwind here. There's some mergansers. Ooh, a whole bunch of them. Thankfully, this headwind is dead on. So I don't really have to follow the shore. Water's cold, though. I'm going to be pretty careful here. I'm going to cut it right up through the middle. I think that's my best bet. We're not at white cap stage yet. Hopefully we won't get there. Oh boy, it feels good to be out here. I've hit a nice little wind protected patch here. My little merganser buddies are back. Oh boy, it is good to be back in the park. That's where we came in. And we just made it up through here, past that little spit of land, up through Farm Lake, and we're in this little narrow right here. First portage, just a little hop and skip, 90 meters. I'm gonna double carry all my portages, I usually do. I'm packing pretty light this trip, but, uh, and I can do a single if I want. I can put my camera bag and everything into the big green pack and do the whole shebang, but slow and steady wins the race. Is that a canoe on my shoulders or am I just happy to see you? I really hope those winds don't pick up anymore. But we'll see. No rush. I can pretty well camp wherever I want at this point. The park is not busy. Well, I've had worse put-ins than this one. Pretty dreamy. See if we can knock this thing off quick. What a beautiful spot. Check it out.
all is going well. I feel good. I feel great, actually, compared to, say, a big trout trip. My hands have not blown up. Not yet. Hoping that doesn't happen. Mud pit. It's only about 11.30. Making good time, despite the uh, little bit of a headwind. So I should be able to uh, take my time finding a nice site on Booth. And I'm pretty well going to have my pick of it, by the looks of it. I don't think there's anybody else here. Not yet. Alright, we'll knock off the rest of this portage with the pack. Go back and get the Carol and Jane. And find ourselves a site. After a drink of water and a snack. And maybe a, a nip off the old Sailor Jerry. Okay, are you kidding me? This is October 20th. T-shirt weather. I'm seeing dragonflies. Let's hope this isn't the norm, the new norm. R.I.P. Gord Downey. Something else, man. 53 years old. Singing the praises of these lakes and rivers and how important they are to our to our souls. To our very existence as a species. It's a no-brainer. Oh, shout out to Joe. Joe Robinette. I watched his last video there where he and Doug went across Algonquin. That was quite a trip. The wolves, very cool. And the fish, my god. And when he caught a bunch of trout, I hit him up on Instagram. And uh, oddly enough, he had done a shout out to me in that video, talking about Karma Moose and the Redemption Trout. Thanks, Joe. That caused a significant bump in uh, views and uh, subscribers. Peace out to all the uh, canoers and campers and bushcrafters and people out there doing it and showing it. Keep it up. Keep on. Damn, it's good to be back. How's that? This pack and light is certainly the way to go. I do not miss pulling that tripod around. Woo! I was talking about uh, Joe Robinette there, and in a recent video, he was talking about they basically grew up without a dad. Just good to good to hear him open up about that. You know, I uh, I had a dad and a mom, and I had a nice family life and the whole bit. My parents weren't really big campers. They got into kayaking on Lake Huron there near the end of their days, but they're both gone now. You know, my mom passed away when she was 67. A good deal of her ashes are in Penn Lake because I never did get up to Algonquin with her. We always talked about coming up here together. It just never happened. So I felt I needed to bring her up here after she passed away. But anyway, my dad's gone. My wife's mother and father are now both gone. My father-in-law just passed away about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Doctor assisted death. He'd had enough. He'd fought long enough, and fought hard enough. And thankfully, we are coming to our senses in this country. Dignity and choice. That's the ultimate choice. You know, people know when they've had enough. He, he knew he'd had enough. He never wavered at all, right to the very end. Cracking jokes up till a minute before he passed away. So John's up there now with his wife Lucy and his two children, Lydia's half-brother and half-sister who both passed away way too early. My wife's been through a lot. I'm lucky to have her, man. She's the rock. Thanks for opening up about that, Joe. It was nice to, nice to hear. Keep doing what you do, buddy.
little snack, some drink, some attitude adjustment, and uh, we're on our way. Head on into uh, brisk wind. Big lake. I turned the stabilization off because I have a feeling it might do weird stuff with the boat. You know, it's not going to know what to lock onto the boat or the horizon. So anyway, I'm going to just leave it off and see what the difference is. Campers, just a bit of a serendipity here. I, uh, I've come to the, sort of the far side of the lake and I was aiming for this one spot and there's actually some people at it, which is kind of nuts because they must be the only other people on the lake. So I cut across this little bay to this, uh, what I saw on the map was an island site. And I'll be damned if it isn't the exact same site I was at with uh, my buddy Scott. I don't know how many years ago, long before we had kids. It was a freaking hilarious trip. We had the Turbo Tarp 3000 put up and it's the biggest freaking tarp, 25 by 25. The wind was just flying in here and hitting the tarp and just bowing the thing. Anyway, it was freaking hilarious. We came out one morning and there was a moose just uh, going nuts, probably full of lice or ticks or something, you know, splashing around in the water trying to feel better and scrape off some, some fur or whatever. We just sat here and watched it for, had to be an hour and a half. This is a nice site, a bit of a hooligan site. It's got one of the most ridiculous fire pits you've ever seen. They left me some wood, probably enough wood there for my entire time here. What am I talking about? Easily. Why don't you bring in a piece of that compass of flooring of yours and we'll make a table out of it. <laughs> but anyway, I will uh, find a nice little place to throw up the hammock. We're home. It's going to be a good spot for a couple nights. Okay, how long have I had this? I just noticed my shadow. <laughs> this awesome, like, I'm bringing that style back. Yeah. Yep. That is the new style. <laughs> So I know the uh, common wisdom is to not make multiple fire pits on campsites in Algonquin, but I'm going to make a very small, tiny stick burner, uh, as I usually do down there, so I can boil water and uh, have a little fire tonight and keep a little bit warm. So I will just steal a couple of rocks. That guy looks about the right height. Ooh, and so does that guy. Maybe that one too. I found a little spot down here. Doesn't seem to be any roots nearby. And I'll be able to clean up here after. That was pretty good, it's kind of big. Oh, there we go. That's the winner. It's kind of flimsy, but that'll do. Look at that stuff, that'll never burn. Oh, there's some cedar. Oh, that's nice. That's nice too, nice dry stuff. That's enough to get us started. Little taste of the booth.
the little burner is working just fine. I've been feeding sticks in from all three angles, eh? Up here, 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 and there's lots of air going, so quick boil. And we're gonna do up a little bit of chili macaroni with beef. Look at these guys. If I'm anywhere as happy as these guys are, look at her. I can't wait to be that happy. Do eight to nine minutes. That chili macaroni really is good. It sure is. I'll say it is, you guys. The wind has calmed down considerably. Still getting little bursts here and there, but it is beautiful. It totally feels like like August. A couple of fellas just uh, came by in their canoe. They're fishing and uh, caught three pike. They said that tonight is supposed to be a uh, meteor shower, so 5D might get put to work. Maybe we'll catch a meteor. I've come pretty close a couple times to some pretty big ones. One in particular, it hit Earth, uh, it landed somewhere up and around Thunder Bay. Pieces in some dude's car. I was up with uh, a buddy in Tom Thompson, doing time lapse of the stars. And when the shot was not happening, a massive one came down, lit up the entire joint. Anyway. Maybe we'll get one of those tonight. Maybe it'll land right here in the lake. You never know. campers I bushed bushed from the bush so I gotta pack it in it's about nine o'clock uh, I've been getting about five hours of sleep for the last six months my body needs to catch up so I'm probably gonna sleep in normally I'm an early riser and maybe I'll get up if the sunrise looks like it needs to be documented that must be quite a quite a big chin to have with the super view how about that that better there's a big raccoon on my site cruising around hope he doesn't wake me up until the morning this is tumble home signing off beautiful morning oh yeah very nice I'm gonna cook up a little brekkie and see if we can find ourselves some adventure. I'm pretty sure we can. Almost coffee time.
right, campers. We're gonna get this day rolling. It's about 9.30. I feel like I've slept in. <laughs> I did have a good sleep last night. A little nippy on my toes a couple times, but I just uh, got the fleece wrap around on the end and I was good to go. So I've kind of spiffied up the camp here a little bit. Fire is out. It's a super wind tunnel right here and if uh, it picked up and there was a couple of embers, who knows. Packed up my cook kit a little bit, windproofed it. And this is what I'm taking for the day. I call that the adventure kit. And it looks like a dandy of a day. As far as I can tell, there's only one other set of campers on the whole lake. It's only these uh, three fellows that are right across from me here, but they're fishing and stuff and they're totally quiet. I don't mind having neighbors. Extra little safety factor when you're out here. Can't, can't be a bad thing. Are we camping yet? Just left the campsite, and we're kind of in around here. Hope we can do some exploring. The lone loon is out here saying hello. Okay, Booth Lake is a big lake. And it is glassy right now. So I'm just sitting out here right in the middle. It's a little bit of cloud cover today, which is nice actually. <laughs> because it's too hot. I've already peeled a couple layers off. And if you're lucky, I might peel off a couple more. Cue the funk music. One thing's for sure, there is a lot of fish in the lake. Like They're popping up all over the place. And the guys I was talking to there, they've, they've caught a bunch of pike. I could hear them giving a little yelp every time they brought one in. I don't know if they're big or small, but lots, lots of breaks on the surface. So anyway, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go all the way up to the very top, maybe do a hike or a portage up there. Man, if it's like this, I'll have an easy paddle back. won't take me more than an hour and a half to get back to the site. So here we go.
Back at the campsite. Everything ship shape and shine. Gonna take a little peek at the back alley of this uh, campsite here. It's pretty nice. Out of the wind, protected. Oh, yeah, they're gone now. It's so nice back here. How about them big old pines, eh? This is linear mode versus what you just saw, which was super wide, super view. You're probably wondering, as am I, why does he have his life jacket on still? You never know when you might fall in the water or forget your own head if it wasn't screwed on tight. much much warmer tonight so I've got one less layer on and uh, I've got my sleeping bag open I'm gonna try and have another easy day tomorrow probably wake up around 7 get out of here around 9 or 10 hopefully have a bit of a tailwind so I can dawdle and take pictures and have fun on the way back I could sure use another three four days out here <laughs> at least
next year. Alright, Tumble Home, signing off. Okay, campers, final morning. Things are starting to pink up out here a little bit. Looks kind of nice. Let's see what this uh, time lapse reveals for us. Feels like 15 degrees, end of October. Have I mentioned that it's October? <laughs> so I'm all packed up, campsite's cleaned up, all my gear here is ready to go. I'm just gonna have a coffee, and then we'll uh, start to pedaddle out of here. The baby loons out there. I wish I could be another 10 days out here. Three days is just not enough. I'm just getting into the swing of it. Next uh, September, we're going for at least a week. Big loop somewhere. See you then. We might need a little bit more rope. Do you have any of that big rope? answers behind me here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> a little 
Another unbelievably warm day. T-shirt weather. Late October. 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 Oh wow, wow, it's beautiful. The wind's picked up. The birch are shedding the last of their golden leaves. And there really could not be better weather for hopping a canoe around. Beauty. Uh, what I wouldn't do to have a month up here. One day. One day. There'd be uh, there'd be no fish in and around here. Particularly in there. There won't be any fish in there. Outrageous. Love it. October. 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 Crazy little devils. Man, I want to have a bath here. <laughs> That's right. Shorts, t shirt, October. Late October. I'm boiling. October. Too lazy, man. I could literally just, if I had another five hours, I could float all the way home. I might give it a try.